how does learning happen is a question I've been asking for a number of years. In this new blog, new research, alternative ways for learning, traditional models of knowledge in particular, how we understand, how we shape cognition, dare I say, could be limited. It's something I've been studying for quite a number of years now, especially um, if we think about working memory limitations for primary teachers, or if you teach a creative subject, much neuroeducation research typically comes from science, maths, those types of classroom settings. So how does learning happen in a creative classroom? Now, as a design and technology teacher, this is a really important question for me. So here's this new research paper published just last month. Um, and I'd encourage you to look at the diagram. If you're not familiar with how learning happens, many of you will have seen this diagram in my physical teacher training sessions. This is typically a popularized uh, model for how we develop knowledge acquisition into our long-term memory. So this new research paper published questioning this traditional cognitive science model. And there's a phrase that I've not heard before called neuro aesthetics. And this is um, where we might, or what neuro aesthetics might mean is our experiences or what happens to our memory when we focus on sensory and emotional experiences. So think, you know, those early years classrooms or what we might do in a drama, a PE or an art lesson when we are looking at tone and texture, when we're studying the Mona Lisa, for example. And then at the very bottom, the research offers another way to look at memory and working memory and knowledge acquisition in a creative context. And, and this is great because inside the paper, it's, critis it's critiquing the, the established models that we're all using currently in our understanding of cognitive science. Um, so I share that top model on my teacher training, but I'm now going to also be sharing this one as an alternative model for early years and for creative subject teachers. So take a look at the, my blog summary. As ever, you've got lots of reflection questions from me that you can use in your own CPD sessions or if you want to circulate the research paper further afield. I hope it uh, supports you if you teach creative or younger students and it gives you something to think about. Thanks for watching.